With the Ryder Cup just weeks away, who better to forecast the fortunes of each team than the most successful captain in the event's history, Tony Jacklin. The Englishman helped reignite the Ryder Cup as a contest during the 1980s, guiding Europe to two victories and a tie. Anna Whiteley met up with him to discuss his Ryder Cup legacy and Europe's chances at Hazeltine. Tony, thank you so much for joining us. Part of your legacy is everything that you've given to the Ryder Cup over the years. And before you came captain four times in the 80s, you teed it up for Europe seven times. It was a very different event back then, wasn't it? What was it like playing for Europe and Britain Island? Well, it was, it was very different. I mean, we always looked forward to it because I suppose to a large degree, we looked up to the Americans, but we were underdogs all the way through really the 60s and 70s. Uh, we were a couple down before we really ever hit a shot. We were in awe of them and the way we traveled, we were at the back of the bus wearing anything anybody would give us. You know, once those issues were taken care of, which I did in 83, the team responded unbelievably. I mean, we were approaching it in a professional manner and we were very unlucky not to bring home the Ryder Cup in, in 83. The changes that you made in 83 influenced the rest of the Ryder Cup as we know it today, flying yeah. the guys, Concorde, yeah. all the best gear, all the best accommodation, but it wasn't just that. One of the main things that you did was you brought Seve back into the team. Yeah. Why for you? I mean, it's obvious now, but why was that so important at the time? Well, you know, Seve, he was like a one-man army. I mean, he was fantastic. And there was nothing uh, over the four times that I captured that uh, he wouldn't do, you know, it, whether it was going up to another player and giving him a shoulder rub and saying, oh, you're swinging very good, you know, and <laughs> building confidence around the team room and so on, things like that. And uh, no, he was, and he was a great match player. He was fearless. And these teams that won in the 80s and started to win, not every player was a major champion or a great player but they were wonderful competitors and they they had a respect for each other and the team that they became probably better than they really were it was a, a marvelous time it was a golden period for for european golf that mid 80s we all saw what, what can be achieved by just organizing things properly treating people as, as, as professionals and um, praying a lot. <laughs> praying a lot. Well, I think that's possibly what our boys are doing this year. It was 87 for you when we won on American soil for the first time ever. The guys have got to do it again this year. Yeah. How different and how much harder is it to do that? Well, 87 wasn't the only time we've won in America. Since then, subsequently, we've won two or three times more. We all know what happened in Chicago the last time. But with six first-timers in the team playing a long way from home, it's going to be a tough one. Davis Love has had the experience of being a captain before. I think it's great what they've done, you know, having four captain's picks, not making the last one until the last minute. You know, the first thing a captain needs to know is that he has got the 12 best players, and uh, certainly Davis should be able to achieve that this time around. What do you think of Darren's pick, Westwood, Keimer, and another rookie, Peters? Is that a bit risky, and would you have done the same? And how difficult is that decision when you've got loads of guys in the mix? Yeah, it's a tough one, but you, you've almost got to pick Westwood and Keimer. I mean, Keimer, major champion. Westwood's played so well in the majors this year, and he's still he's you know, got so much Ryder Cup experience. We saw Keimer involved in the winning putt at, uh, at Medina. And obviously he was in, impressed by Peters. So he's obviously happy with what he's got, but it, it, it's going to be fascinating to see the likes of Fitzpatrick, Sullivan, how they settle in. And if he gets them to get it started and, and we can edge ahead early, you know, who knows? And just finally, well, the Americans, they haven't won three events in a row now they're going to want it more than ever. What do you say to those people, even Europeans, who say, oh, it would be good for the competition for America to win? Do you agree with that, or do they need it? Well, you know, I, like I say, I, I like to win rather than lose, and, and I hope Europe can win again. That being said, 
I would be very surprised if America didn't take it this time. It is such a strong experience slide. The start's the important thing this time. How, how we get it started, and that is paramount for Europe, getting off to a, a fast uh, start, making everybody realise, hey, this is going to happen again. It's going to be fun, and I, and I wish Darren and, and obviously the European team the best, but the best team at the end of the week will win, and that's the way it needs to be. Tony, thank you so much. Whatever happens, I know we will be blue and yellow all the way. Yeah. He is the greatest Ryder Cup captain of all time, Tony Jacklin.